Tonight on the Northwestern News Report, the student body elects a new administration. We talk with President-elect Christian Wade about his priorities for the upcoming term. Plus, shots in arms for everyone. We hear from a Chicago pastor organizing to administer vaccines for undocumented immigrants at our church. And bunnies are hopping into spring around campus. We'll introduce you to the group chat that's keeping track of bunny sightings. Plus, a less welcome creature on campus. And you gnats make a comeback. We explain why they're back to bug students. Those stories and more tonight on the Northwestern News Report. It's your news right, right now. now. Good evening and welcome to the Northwestern News Report. I'm Simone Scott. And I'm Savannah Kelly. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with ASG's presidential elections looking a little different this year, with two slates of candidates dropping out of the race and an extended campaigning period. But NU now has a new student body administration. And NN's Julia Richardson has more. After about a week of campaigning, Christian Wade and Ada Ogbana winning the ASG presidential election in a landslide. Like if I have the opportunity to, you know, really like, you know, make an impact and create, you know, change at the university, which is like my goal, like since I set foot on campus, like, you know, why, why not, you know, like, you know, reach it, like try, at least try um, at that opportunity. Outgoing ASG president Juan Zuniega expects a smooth transition. I think they have a lot of good ideas um, and I'm pretty confident that they're going to put together a really good like leadership team. Wade says after building a team, he and Ogbana will get to work creating a student organizing grant, supporting students holding marginalized identities, and increasing ASG's connection to the student body. If at the end of the year, if like you can look back on our like administration and say like, oh, you know, like they didn't really do anything or like they had some good ideas at the beginning, but nothing really like happened, then I guess like we failed as an administration. In addition to receiving around 80% of votes, Wade and Ogbana received endorsements from NUDM, NUCNC, Fossil Free NU, and more. They really kind of centered student organizations in the platform and promised um, accessibility to ASG, promised to promote the voice of student orgs. Wade says he's excited to get started. After first order of business, get rid of the NAS, we'll, we'll take care. We'll hopefully tack, be able to tackle you know, some more pressing issues. A new administration as we emerge into a new normal. Julia Richardson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Julia. The official transition from old to new administration happens this week at ASG's Senate meeting. This year, elite universities seeing a drop in acceptance rates. Some experts point to test optional admissions policies as the reason why. And an end, Diego Ramos has more. March 26, a day that engulfed Sofia Melendez in anxiety and excitement as she waited for her Northwestern admission decision. But for the most part, I was very, I was very nervous. Anxiety that paid off the second she read the words, congratulations. I spent about 10 to 15 minutes just sobbing. In an email sent to NNN, university spokesperson John Yates said Northwestern had its lowest ever admit rate, admitting only 6.8% of all first year applicants. It made it a lot more competitive and just more of a lottery. The reason for this drop a recent study published by the Wall Street Journal points to an increase in applications following test optional admissions policies, attributing them to the decrease in acceptance rates between this and last year. A trend seen not just at Northwestern, but other institutions like Yale, Harvard, and Duke, all of which reported lower admission rates this year. The SAT was a big barrier for me. Um, I do feel like I had to overcome a lot of barriers and they were increased due to the pandemic. In numerous studies, including one by professors from the University of Pennsylvania and the University of Southern California, experts say that standardized testing should be a thing of the past. Yet the College Board, the creator of the SAT, says the exam should still be in place, yet they do agree that the exam should be redesigned advantages like people of color, there's a lot of gender disparities in that. And I feel like it only advantages the wealthy white people. How the SAT will play a role in the future is unclear. Diego Ramos Bechara, Northwestern News Network.
the university has yet to comment on whether the test optional policy will extend beyond the class of 2026's admission cycle. This month is Asian American Heritage Month, and this year violence against Asians and Asian Americans made national headlines. But the discrimination started centuries ago. Now activists in Illinois are advocating for an act that mandates Asian American history education in all K-12 Illinois public schools. NNN's Hannah Zhang has the story. 98 yes versus 13 no. The TEACH Act, standing for Teaching Equitable Asian American Community History, passes in the Illinois House of Representatives with bipartisan support on April 14th. The bill will go to the Senate this month. For the first time in my life, um, I'm being heard and Asian Americans are being heard. Starting in 2023, the TEACH Act will require all Illinois public schools to include a unit of Asian American history. Right now, Asian Americans don't see themselves reflected in history books. Despite the fact that it was Asian-heavy population, like they didn't really include any Asian history. This not only leads to misunderstanding by other ethnic groups, but also... We believe our own stereotypes. And oftentimes that means that we either distance ourselves from our own heritage, our culture, and our communities. But how could history teachers who don't teach Asian American history be able to quickly pick it up? Activists tell me they can start with a PBS series called Asian Americans that comes with lesson plans and discussion questions. There will be teaching for educators for this curriculum. Illinois House Representative Jennifer Gonkerschwitz sponsors the act and brings it to the House and the Senate. Absence of Asian Americans in our in our curriculum is a decision. Inclusion is a choice, and so is exclusion. Painting a fuller picture of U.S. history, Hannah Jiang, Northwestern News Network. We have Hannah now. What does the act look like going forward? Both activists and Rep. Gongo Shuas tell me that they are optimistic that the act will cross the finish line in the Senate. Rep. Gongo Shuas also says that other states, such as Massachusetts and Kansas, have reached out since the act went to the House. She is expecting a national impact after the act moves forward. Simone Savannah, thank you, Hannah. Simone, back to you. Evanston's three unrelated rule, or its brothel law, has faced criticism with little reform. Though neighborhood activists and Northwestern students want lawmakers to repeal it, little has changed. And it ends, Elizabeth Betts has more. Evanston's three unrelated rule makes it illegal for three or more unrelated adults to live in one apartment or house. Everybody who comes to us has in common with everybody else is that they cannot afford the housing that's available to them. That is a systemic issue and it needs to be changed. Organizations like Connections for the Homeless see Evanston's three unrelated rule as standing in the way of affordable housing in the city. One of the things that uh, I find most disturbing about it right now is that we have a housing crisis. There are people really struggling. Sharing housing is an ancient strategy for survival. However, the law has been on the zoning committee's agenda since 2018 with no change in legislation. Lowbach is fighting for change. We've been doing research and sharing information. Lowbach says Northwestern needs to play a role. The city can't do it all by itself. I think that Northwestern University should be playing a bigger role in creating more affordable housing. Though this law makes it illegal to live with three or more unrelated adults, Weinberg senior Jessica Waldman has eight roommates. No, we've never had any problems and nine of us live here and none of us are related. NNN reached out to the zoning committee for a comment, but didn't receive an answer. Evanston's zoning committee met on April 28th to talk about this ordinance, but a change to the law has not been announced. Elizabeth Betts, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Elizabeth. Savannah, over to you. Thanks, Simone. COVID has a disproportionate impact on the undocumented community, and now Chicagoans are working to make sure everyone gets a shot at the vaccine. Megan Leibowitz has the story. I'm going to show you a picture, and this is not a recent one. Let me see if I still have it. Emma Lozano is a pastor at Lincoln United Methodist, a Chicago church with many undocumented members. These are like the people who died in my church. 
from COVID. Beyond the walls of Lozano's church, a similar story. According to a study by a pro-immigration group, over two-thirds of undocumented immigrants work frontline essential jobs. They have to be out, out and about in the community um, and exposing themselves. Fred Sow leads policy development at the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights. He says undocumented immigrants aren't just at risk for more exposure to COVID, some are hesitant to go to vaccination centers. You know, we're trying to get out good messaging that um, people are eligible for COVID testing and COVID vaccines, regardless of their status. When you go to a vaccination center, providers will often ask you for a form of ID. Undocumented people are eligible for the vaccine, but oftentimes it's the question of proof of identity that's leading some to want to stay home. Our people are afraid because before they were asking them for all of this proof. That's why Lozano organized for vaccines to be administered right there at her church. She says hundreds have been vaccinated. We're going to figure out how to fight and make sure they get that, that vaccine. Communities rallying together, getting shots in arms for a brighter tomorrow. Megan Leibowitz, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Megan. The Department of Homeland Security says U.S. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, will not conduct enforcement operations at or near vaccine clinics and distribution sites. Coming up, how disposable masks are impacting the environment and our local animals. Plus, spring quarter comes with a little more than good weather. What kinds of animals are making campus appearances? Welcome back. The latest numbers from the NU COVID-19 dashboard list 35 new cases between April 26th and May 2nd. The positivity rate during that period was 0.28%. As more Americans get their COVID-19 shots, the CDC is loosening public health guidelines. Northwestern's COVID policies, however, remain largely the same. I sit down with the lead case managers for Northwestern's risk management team to find out why. I think it's difficult sometimes um for students, faculty, staff to understand that public health um, deals with a large group of people. So you, you have to cast a wide net to try and keep everybody safe and stop spread. Last week, the CDC released new guidelines saying fully vaccinated Americans can safely gather outdoors without wearing masks. However, Northwestern still requires everyone, regardless of vaccination status, to wear masks on campus grounds. I think right now it's difficult to verify who is vaccinated and again have um, everyone truly understand what fully vaccinated means. Individuals aren't considered fully vaccinated until two weeks after receiving their second dose. I think maybe a lot of people would say, I got my second dose yesterday, so now I don't have to wear a mask. And unfortunately, that's not um, accurate information. Some students say they feel more comfortable when those around them are wearing masks. I, just because I got my second shot, it does not necessarily make me feel safer. Uh, I think I would only feel safer if everyone around me got fully vaccinated. Case managers stress that being fully vaccinated doesn't mean you can forget all mitigation efforts, especially in a communal setting on campus. But vaccines don't prevent the um, infection altogether. It does minimize some of the risk. It minimizes some of the likelihood of transmission, but you can still get COVID when you've been vaccinated. The CDC reports that Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are 94% effective in preventing COVID-19 hospitalizations. If you are fully vaccinated, Northwestern does not require you to quarantine after known exposure to the virus as long as you remain asymptomatic. Simone. Thanks, Savannah. A study published in the National Library of Medicine says every day 3.4 billion face coverings are tossed out. What happens if those masks aren't disposed of properly? And it ends Joey Safchik tells us that your mask trash is not anyone's treasure. Joining the ranks of plastic bags and plastic water bottles, streets littered with masks. It's really sad because Evanston is so nice. Lots of it I've seen everywhere. It's very noticeable. 
noticeable not only for wild cats, but wild animals. Since these are unusual in the environment, certain animals might actually be intrigued to the level that an animal might be intrigued about something. I walk my dog a lot every time we, you know, go on a walk. At least once I have to pull a mask out of his mouth. And uh, not only is it bad for the environment, but it's disgusting for me to have to pull it out of his mouth and touch other people's, you know, breath germs. <laughs> you might remember these photos that circulated on Instagram last year. That threat to the animals, plus having Lake Michigan in our backyard, makes water pollution a real concern. My daughter and I did an Earth Day cleanup at the Arrington Lagoon and also along the lakeshore, just south of the campus where all those big rocks are. We found um, four or five masks, I would say maybe six masks. Cherie Fisher sits on the Evanston Environment Board. Unlike some U.S. cities, Evanston does not have a fine for mask or PPE littering. Litter itself, of course, is, a, is an endless problem and uh, it's not going to end with the pandemic. Professor Blair says paper and cloth are mostly biodegradable, but microplastics can break down and infiltrate the water. The solution, he says, is simple. If you leave a house with the mask, come home with the mask. Now, experts emphasize you should continue wearing masks according to CDC guidelines. Just make sure you dispose of them properly. Go the extra mile by cutting these strings and placing the mask in a tightly round trash bag. Used PPE is not recyclable. In Evanston, Joey Safchik, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Joey. And speaking of animals, Northwestern students are not the only ones who have been enjoying the spring weather. Evanston's fluffier residents are leaving their burrows to get their time in the sun. Here's NNN's Gabrielle Coriati. It's not just the wind that's causing movement in the bushes around campus. Take a closer look underneath the branches and you might be a hair surprised. I am just enamored with them. The bunnies, I find them adorable. I also love when they interact with each other in particular. The rabbits hopping through the lawn, hoping to show that winter is finally gone. My favorite part is it feels almost whimsical. It, it, it feels like getting in touch with that sort of childlike excitement of, ooh, bunny. Bunnies hopping to campus, like this one behind me, are not just a sign of spring, but for some, a reminder of home. I was honestly kind of homesick when I came to campus and when I came to campus and I saw all the bunnies, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like home. Easing homesickness and an irresistible way to bond with new classmates. They told me that at U of I, there's a squirrel watchers club. And I was like, you know what's better than a squirrel, <laughs> objectively speaking, a bunny? Um, and so I was like, haha, I should start a bunny watchers club. The club, a 135 member group chat, now sending their bunny sightings. There is something special about not just getting to see a bunny, but getting to like point to it and be like, hey, look at this and like share that experience with other people. Sharing the experience so no bunny has to be alone. Gabrielle Coriati, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Gabrielle. If you're looking to spot some bunnies at Northwestern, Frankie says the best time to search is around dusk or dawn in the grassier areas around campus. The bunnies are cute, but unwelcome spring visitors are bugging students. And an end Jenny Hu flies into the world of Northwestern's gnats. They're really annoying. I just wish they were not in my face. Spring in Evanston calls for the joy of basking in the sun and the pain of swatting away swarms of gnats. Literally, they are everywhere. But what exactly are these flying nuisances? Gnats are common names for small, non-biting flies that travel in swarms. Either mayflies, they're called fish flies, sand flies. They, they have a different version of the name, but it, it's a, like a water effect. This water effect can be seen most easily here on the lake fill because gnats lay their eggs in the masses near bodies of water. It's why the lake fill is known as a gnat hotspot. Don't go by the lake. Northwestern lead carpenter Nick Pappas Jr. says most of the gnats we encounter are mayflies, which live about 24 hours. That's why a lot of time you see huge swarms and then the following day you see them all deceased on the floor. But Pappas Jr. also says identifying the exact species is no easy task with over 600 species in North America alone. Underclassmen getting their first taste of the gnats. Whenever I go for a run in the morning, I, I eat them. 
Pappas Jr. says there isn't much the university can do to control these gnats. We always just stick with the green approach of letting them live their life cycle and then vacuum them, sweeping them. Letting nature run its course while looking out for one another. People up north are like, oh, don't go to here, 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 because there are tons of gnats there. Jenny Ha, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Jenny. Pappas Jr. also says gnats typically arrive in the early spring and can be a part of campus life until the fall. Coming up, a new sailing team set sights on new horizons. At Northwestern, we're wildcats in every way. Welcome back to the Northwestern News Report. With warmer weather, students are running outdoors to play intramural sports at NU. But here's the kicker, they're doing it all while masked up. NNN's Katrina Pham has the story. Playing soccer, frisbee, and softball, NU students are catching competition in this season of intramural sports. I was really, really excited when I found out that like Willard had a soccer team. Um, because it was just a great way to like meet new people in Willard and also like play soccer as well. Being on a team and fostering camaraderie in sports. Being athletic um, in some fashion is like one of the best ways to bond with people. Students connecting with teammates on and off the field. The team dynamic aspect is more constituted in the walk to the game and the walk back and the game itself. And getting outside, helping players even after the final buzzer. I definitely think I have more energy during the day, more positive attitude um, when I've been making a good habit out of getting outside and exercising. Wearing masks and staying distant on the field, students feeling less worried about COVID. Because ultimate frisbee, soccer and softball, they're always kind of like pretty far apart, so I felt pretty safe. With warm days ahead, students are gearing up and coming out to play. Katrina Pham, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Katrina. From land sports to water sports, you may have seen the chalk drawings of sailboats decorating at Northwestern's campus as the Northwestern sailing team recruits new members. And then Michaela Denault dives into the story. Diego Torres has sailing experience and is excited to return to the water. I'd never really done that much team racing before and things along those lines, because you get paired up with kids that don't really know what's going on too much. And a big part of your job is teaching your fellow um, sailor. Outdoor events in groups of masked recruits, safely launching their training. We are limited to only a certain amount of boats per practice. We wanted to make sure that everyone joining could have the opportunity to sail when they wanted to. Torres teaches beginner sailors tips and tricks out on the lake, though it's difficult to lend a hand with COVID-19 on the land. Because you can't really see facial expressions, stuff like that, so you have to talk talk through things a lot more, and also you, you can talk with your hands a lot, that's very helpful. With the loosening of COVID-19 restrictions, the Northwestern sailing team is undoing their knots in preparation for fall competition making sure that we use this time to the best of our ability so when we come back in the fall and are competing we can be like as fresh as possible and know that we used this season for good. Torres prepares for the fall and three more years with the team, learning by assisting others. I'm excited to really dive into that community and just get to know everybody that beyond the sailing center here at Northwestern. After a bumpy year, smooth sailing towards new horizons in Evanston. Michaela Denault, Northwestern News Network. The sailing team welcomed 16 new members out of hundreds of applicants. Torres and the recruits say they are excited to grow as teammates. And speaking of sailing, Gabrielle Coriotti is here with the forecast now. Gabby, will there be any sunshine for the team on the lake this week? 
Thanks, Simone. So the sailors might be a little bit out of luck if they were hoping for some sun this week. Their best bets will be on Wednesday and Friday, where it will still be cloudy, but there will be some sun peeking out from behind those clouds. But on Thursday and Saturday and Sunday, they will be straight out of luck as the weather those days just calls for cloud and rain. In addition to the cloudy skies, we're also seeing some cooler temperatures this week than we did last, with the highs throughout this week staying in the low 50s and on Sunday at even getting to a high of 48. But luckily, the lows aren't too much lower with the lows staying in the mid 40s except for on Saturday where we do see the lows get into the low 40s of 41. So this might not be the best week to be taking those beach selfies but hopefully as we get further into May we'll be seeing more of the summer sun. Now back to you. Thanks Gabrielle. Up next a student cartoonist shows us he loves his friends very much. Don't go away. Welcome back. Ennie's very own, creating comics about love and friendship, bringing some brightness to a dark year. I caught up with the creator. Senior Abriel Siragar, drawing comics to pass the time over spring break. And they've stuck around. And I've always wanted to draw comics. The comics feature a sentimental bear named Berbert. I thought like a solitary animal, but like portraying them in a family setting and in a friendship setting um, was really, was the message I tried to get across. Scrolling through the Berbert Comics Instagram page, you can see that Berbert wears his heart on his sleeve and he's not afraid to tell his friends when he loves them. I mean, I write these comics really to project how I feel in life day to day. They're very wholesome and I feel like if you talk to my friends, they'd probably say that I say I love you a lot. And this was just another way to say it. Sierra Gar's friends say they definitely feel the love in these comics. Sometimes I'll see myself kind of pop up in these comics and I'll see him, you know, bringing other friends that he has that I also know into the comics. And um, it's it's a joy, like it truly makes me feel so loved. Although Sierra Gar didn't originally intend to share Berbert with the world, Burton believes the comics make the world a better place. Somebody who doesn't know Abriel at all, who might see these comics for the first time, will understand just how valuable friendship and love is to a person like him and and in my mind how it how important it should be to all of us it's inspirational you can find berbert on instagram at berbert underscore comics savannah these comics are so cute and wholesome oh my gosh they're adorable i love watching his instagram stories every day yeah and when i was with him he was drawing a, drawing a comic about how journalism is a team sport which i thought was awesome was very great such a great attitude to have well that's all the time we have for tonight i'm savannah kelly and i'm simone scott good night